brush out and start eating loads of them to get the nutrition, you might find them a bit strong in the palate. But we're very lucky because uh, we've dragged away from the garden of earthly delights, uh, of unearthly de <laughs> delights tonight, <laughs> Ian Pickett, who's been on Gastronaut before. He's the owner, operator, and impresario behind Bush Tucker Ice Cream. Ian, thanks very much for coming in. Thanks very much, Bruce, and good evening, everyone. Now, you've done very interesting things with quite a range of Australian bush foods, um, and a lot of it comes back to taste, but a lot of it also is, is um, discovering the real nutritional values of a lot of these foods. Yes, they're poorly understood, Bruce, and um, you know, typically um, the, the Australian bush foods were, were, were eaten by the hunters and gatherers, um, and so they weren't well developed like um, European and even American foods, which were where a lot of the people there were farmers, so corn was already well developed. So mm. a lot of our foods um, are really at the spice stage where people eat little bits and they give tremendous flavours. But, um, but it, along with that, um, the, you know, the harsh climate of Australia with its droughts and floods and everything has developed a range of of native foods that have great sustainability and they do this by special additives or special needs in them that uh, really antioxidant type things that keep them alive during these um, very poor periods and these of course are a wonderful benefit to us as consumers. Mm. So that, that's one of the reasons why they're so concentrated in uh, these goodies. Absolutely. Mm. Well tell us about some of them well, um, look, the, the real key to any uh, superfood is the colour. The standard superfood that's used as a comparison is blueberry. So that dark blue colour is um, fairly typical of uh, something that's got a lot of antioxidants. So either dark green, dark red, a bluey red is an indicator of antioxidants and uh, really high nutritional value. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, most of the Australian foods, when compared to blueberries, are much, much higher. So um, one of the classic examples is um, kakadu plum, mm -hmm. which is it has 7% um, ascorbic acid or vitamin C. Now, compare that with uh, what do we use? Uh, well, an orange. An be. orange, yeah. An orange is about six times greater mm. than, a, than an average orange. And these things are only the size of a, uh, a big olive. And so... Uh, so it's a bit optimistic to call them a plum, isn't it? Yeah, well, that, that's, the, the Aboriginals didn't call it that. That's a marketing <laughs> thing that's mm. come up in the last 10 years. But, um, yeah, they, they've got a... When you add sugar to them, they've got a vanilla-y, apricot-y flavour to them. But um, generally, you can't eat them. They're, they're so astringent. The, the, that high vitamin C content makes them very astringent. Mm. And, and it's only in recent years that I found out the Aborigines used to carry them around in a dilly bag. After about three months, they get really soft. And um, th they use them as a source of vitamin C mm. uh, against scurvy um, yeah. throughout the top end. So in a way, if you translate to the Mediterranean, the northern uh, or the European context, it's a similar story to the olive, which you don't pick off the tree and munch away and... Uh, you know, burst into a smile. You that's <laughs> right. That's you right. You pucker up. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And mm. so, and you know, the, the Aboriginals learnt a lot of this stuff. Um, you know, some of the cycads, for example, they, they they found out how to detoxify them. So they 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 can make a flower out of the seeds of a cycad mm. that it would normally kill anyone that came near them. Mm. But um, you learn how to do it, or they did over the millennia. It's a bit off the track, but I often wonder uh, what the mental process is. Oh, he ate that and died. I'll have another go and see if I'll live. Yeah, well, <laughs> this is where they're, uh, they're, they're dreaming their stories come in. They're, they're a wealth of knowledge. And mm. uh, um, I was a livestock advisor early in my career in the north and west of the state. And I had a lot of Indigenous friends. And through their stories, um, you know, I learned a lot about mm. uh, things that, um, that are passed down by word of mouth over millennia. And so, is that what 
brought you into or your interest in Bush Tucker. Absolutely, yeah. So it and, came from those days. Yeah, and a little bit more than that. You know, I think um, in Australia, we what we've tried to do is adopt, adapt European plants to Australian conditions. We're, we really should have gone around it the other way. So, you know, our pastures, they're sustainable in this climate. And we've introduced highly productive pastures that fall over in a drought. And mm. yet you look at the nature grasses and they keep going so it's more than just the bush foods it's a mm. it's a you know and I, i'm disappointed really that uh, we haven't developed that stuff mm. we haven't yeah. put the research in to do it properly and if i go down to uh, well first I, I agree totally you know yeah. there's so much to be learned there and still you know this can still happen but i'm i'm curious about the um, garden of unearthly delights because if i go down there and i want to buy some ice cream what might I get? Well, you get a range of things. Um, you know, we virtually any native fruit you can think of, uh, we have on the menu. So we've got desert limes, we've got quandong, which is the Australia, uh, South Australian fruit. And by the way, that's one that I think has unlimited potential. It's been poorly developed. Um, if you think about it, years ago the apricot in China was like the Kwandong is today, you know, mm. thousands of years ago, and they've developed up to a big juicy fruit. But the, I love Kwandong smoothies. Yeah. I usually have them at the arid gardens just outside Port Augusta. Right. Right. Yeah. Well, the you know, I think it's a wonderful fruit, and we've got native mint and cocoa. Now, there's an example of, of the problems that come with native fruit. Native fruits often have a a side taste to them that makes them um, hard to appreciate their full flavour. So By we, that you mean bitter or...? No, well, this has got a menthol, eucalypti type yep. aftertaste with it. Mm -hmm. So what we've done is mixed it with French cocoa, and so native mint and cocoa, and we've virtually got a peppermint uh, chocolate ice cream. It's a beautiful ice cream. And mm. then... Then uh, wattle seed. Now there's a there's that that's another one. The Maillard reaction when you roast wattle seed produces these coffee, hazelnut, coconut, cocoa mm. tones mm. to them. And that's the thing that happens when you're sort of browning meat and that's right. That's, that's right. And uh, coffee is a mm, classic example. Mm. You roast it. So we roast it, grind it, and then we uh, um, um, espresso it and put it into an ice cream. So well. Uh, I might go down after the show. Yeah, well, <laughs> either do that or come over to the Spirit Festival. We've been a regular attendant with the Spirit Festival and we've got our big trailer there and all our menu is fully there. Great. So what are some of the... Th well, obviously you're having to blend things and so forth. Well, uh, what are some of the triumphs you've had in adapting such a, well, uh, a non-cultured fruit or um, food product into something that our population will readily take? Well, look, I, well, once people taste it, um, the, the, the curiosity gets a lot of people in. A lot of people won't taste anything other than the normal. So our mallee honey and our macadamia, they're familiar with those and they won't go past that. But we've got 65% returned customers at the farmer's market. We're there every Sunday morning at Adelaide Showgrounds and uh, they go through the range of flavours just mm. to experience them. And, uh, you know, so uh, you know, that was part of my aim is to introduce these wonderful flavours to the population. Now, Ian, um, just before you go, you've got some websites that people might like to yes. follow up on. Yeah, we've, look, we've gone away a bit from the, the, the superfoods aspect of it, but there's a number of excellent papers on the, on the web uh, produced by the Rural Industry Research and Development Corporation. So that's R-I-R-D-C. If people um, Google that, they'll get onto their info services. And there's two papers there particularly, if you're interested, The Functional Properties of Australian Bush Foods and the Health Benefits of the Australian Native Foods. Okay. And then if people want um, more information, ANFIL, which is the Australian... That's A-N-F-I-L. Again, Google that. 
Um, they've got on there the Australian Native Flavour Wheel, which um, mm-hmm. tries to describe all these it's these flavours. In, that one. Yeah, it mm. is. It's fantastic. And then we've got our South Australian Native Foods Organisation here in South Australia. So if you Google SA Native Foods, you'll get onto that website. And they're great sources of information and great people who are really enthusiastic about trying to introduce people to the benefits of native foods. A little bit like you maybe. So Ian Pickett thanks very much for coming in and while you're still sort of tied to the chair we might ask you if you'd like to come back again and we can cover some of those areas that we didn't quite get to tonight. Thank you very much Bruce. Look forward to it. Much appreciated. That's Ian Pickett from Bush Tucker Ice Cream and now here's Ricky Lee Jones with Danny's All Star Joint. Nice.